Hello everyone, my name is Heather Butler and I run a ministry called Hidden Treasures Ministries International and this is our coffee break that we'd like to share with you so kick your shoes off, put your feet up, have a coffee or a cup of tea and relax and just listen to what it is that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. Um, today we're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 12 verse, verse 11 and I feel it's really applicable for all of us um, as we receive revelation from the Lord about the importance of our testimony and how it becomes a living word for those who don't yet know Jesus, those in our families, those that we bump into on the high street. So let's have a look at the word of God together. Okay, this is taken from Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. That's quite a statement, isn't it? And I want to share with you some of the thoughts that I have around this verse and to encourage you into your walk with Jesus today and throughout the rest of the week. You know, people are desperate, looking for answers and finding many things to distract them that will tickle their ears. But the truth of the matter is that only Christ saves and only he can make a difference in their lives. He is the God of hope. He is with us. When we have no hope, he gives us hope. When we're in despair, we're not alone. He is with us. He gives us hope and enables us to overcome being despairing of the situation that we're in. And we'll keep coming back to this again and again as we carry on. You know, he is the God of hope and we are God's signposts upon the earth, his GPS. But how will the people know that unless they see it lived in our lives today? What do we have that is different to those who do not know him? We have a hope a joy, a peace and a faith that will enable us to continue to be free men and women of God, no longer influenced by the draw of the world, but rather drawn to the light of Jesus. I want to testify today to the wonders of God, firstly to the drawing light of Jesus in us and the power of that and the joy and the peace about us that draws others into his presence. The light draws I have a testimony to share with you about a disabled man who was stood at a bus stop one day and I was stood there, I was eight months pregnant, I was tired, I just wanted to get home. And I felt the Lord say, Heather, go and speak to him. And everything in me thought, oh no, I'm tired, I don't want to do this. And I thought, oh, this, this isn't God, this is you. But that urge wouldn't go away. And so I prayed and I said, oh Lord, is that you? If that's you, then that man will have to come and stand by me and start to talk. Immediately my prayer ended. The fella came and stood next to me and began to chat and I thought, oh great. I'm trying to be real here because this is how we are sometimes, even though we can be wonderful men and women of God. We have those moments where we're off guard, we're tired and we just want to do things our way and not God's way. But God had a plan. So we get on the bus and I'm thinking, great, 40 minutes to go to sleep before I get home. Oh, this young man came and sat next to me and I, again, I thought, oh, great. There's my sleep time gone. But then I began to feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit saying, come on, Heather. So I said to him, you haven't got an accent that's from round here. Where are you from? And he told me where he was from. And he said, I don't like living where I'm living now. And I said, why not? He said, I've no friends. And I said, well, I'm a Christian. I said, and I go to church and we have a Bible study, but we have a meal first. How about coming along to that and meet some new people? And immediately said, oh, I don't believe in God. So I said, don't you? He said, no, I don't. So I began to tell him about how I'd been miraculously healed of a cyst on my ovary that had gone on its own, that had needed an operation. And he was suddenly silent. And he looked at me intently and he said, I can't take that from you, can I? And I said, no, because it's real and it happened. And then a big smile and he said, can I come to the group on Wednesday and bring my sister with me? 
So this young disabled man and his sister who was disabled, they both came to the group and we grew to love them. They were lovely people. But three months later, he died. And you know, I often think about the fact that I didn't want to talk to him. I was too tired. But how the Holy Spirit came and offered a lifeline, a hope to this man. You see, we can miss so many opportunities when we're not standing in that place of obedience. Everything in me just wanted to sleep and shut him out. But God had a plan and a purpose for this man's life. God with us. He was with us that day. He was with this man that day who gave his life to Jesus subsequently, him and his sister. And I know I'll meet him in heaven one day. Hallelujah. It's all relevant. It means so much to people. He is a God of provision. We ask when we pray that God will provide for our needs or well, part of that is him reminding us of scripture and the word so that we're able to apply it not only to our lives daily but to the lives of others that we come into contact with to encourage them, to enable them to step up a little higher into what it is that the Lord is asking them to do. Maybe they're struggling or bound, maybe they're sick and ill. We have the answer because throughout the day God is with us. He really is. And we see testimony of it every single day. He's an amazing father. Jesus loves us and wants us to live fruitful, abundant lives. He doesn't want us to be bowed down with cares and worries and anxieties. He knows how that stops the flow of his spirit in us. He knows that when we are worried and anxious, that we are doubting that he is that we're thinking that he's not able to help in that situation but we have to overcome doubting doubting is saying you're not big enough you're not great in us but we know that we know that he is an amazing mighty god for whom nothing is too difficult so we can spur people on when they're going through those moments I believe that the Lord is speaking to us all today and saying you have to get your joy back, you have to get your peace back, your hope back. People need to recognise in you something that is different, something that is sustaining you, that spurs you on, that doesn't falter, even that continues even when the direst of circumstances happen in your life. It's such You are such a living testimony to the word of God and to his promises as you overcome. I believe that this scripture is in Revelation for a reason. It's an end time ministry. Are you hearing this? It's an end time ministry. It's the one thing that we have in an ungodly world where people are so unchurched that they have no revelation or understanding of Jesus and why he came. They have no understanding of the reality of who he truly is. But here we come with testimony about what Jesus has done in our lives, not only how he saved and set us free, but how daily he intervenes in our daily life and enables us to be overcomers because of his strength in us so that we are healed and set free and many things happen because God is with us every moment of the day he doesn't slumber or sleep he doesn't do that God is the father he's constantly aware of us constantly trying to find ways of enabling us to have an improved life constantly drawing people towards us who will encourage us feed us and then we're able to give out and encourage and feed others what an amazing God he never sleeps he's always awake on his watch we live in the real world but we're not of the world we are a kingdom living people. The principles of heaven in us change the atmosphere around us. And we are a people of destiny, of authority. Our voice counts as we pray. You know, thinking of prayer, sometimes we can sit there and we're tired. We're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can pray today. Is it doing anything? I want to share a revelation of prayer that I had one day. I was sat at Timothy's home. <coughs> And he simply just said, Xbox on. The television suddenly came on 
and the Xbox came on. He hadn't got a lead or a control in his hand. It was voice activated and I thought, oh, wow, and something stirred in my spirit. Then it wanted a password, so he spoke that out and again went into all the menus. And now he's just moving his hand like this in the air. And the pages are zooming past on the TV and I'm thinking, what? And then the Holy Spirit said, Heather, when you pray, what do you think happens? I thought, oh, wow, this is amazing. Voice activation switched it on. When we begin to pray, we have a voice activation between us and God. He recognises us. We have the password at the end of our prayer times, J-E-S-U-S, -S, that got us onto the mainframe. And now all heaven releases whatever it is that's needed i don't need to know how many angels i need for this or that or what their names are i know that god is my father that he's listening that he's heard and he is going to send help at the right time and that is the most amazing thing and i want you to think about that our prayer times are powerful. The enemy doesn't like us speaking to God and will try and do everything he can to stop it. He's tried to stop me from speaking to you right now. We've had two phone calls so far to try and take me away from the importance of the word of God to you today. But we're just spurred on and encouraged. We can do all things through Christ who strengthened us because we were created for this life upon the earth today. It's just the most wonderful thing to be in control of your life in Christ, knowing that no matter how weak we are, that in him we really can do all things. We have been given the most wonderful opportunity to change things in our towns and villages and states forever. We have so many gifted and talented people in our families, in our churches. It's truly amazing. The very imprint of Jesus dwells within us. He rests within us, each of us who belong to him by his spirit. His very nature in us defies every act of the enemy against us. He stamps on his head constantly against all that he has tried to do to make us feel less than who we truly are. This is our God because God is with us all the time. We serve a God of love, a God who sent his only begotten son into the darkness of a world of sin to sabotage the plans of Satan, to stamp on his head and destroy his plans, to snatch away the people from the enemy's hands and to place them into God's hands. You know, we are fighting for the lives of those who live in this town, fighting for their inheritance and God is not willing to let one of them go but persevering to prove his love. His love is an active force. It causes those who love him to follow his son. The Lord is awakening us to the reality of who he truly is in the midst of us. It's not time to give up. If you're feeling like that, stop grumbling. Just get on with the job that you've been given. You are more than an overcomer. The word says it and we believe it daily. Why? Because God is with us and we can believe that it's truth and breath to us and life to us. It's time to start to see who he has created us to be, who we are in him today. We're not a band of powerless people. We're a family of God who are on the move in this place to break the power of the enemy from over our cities, from over our nations. We have been through a time of sifting, many of us, and a time of shaking over the years. Many have stood the test of time and have been awakened to the truth of what God is doing. Here, now, it's time to be active about it. We live in a world where everything is in, in chaos and upheaval and we feel that we're not able to do anything about it. That's a lie of the enemy because we have everything at our disposal that we need because the Father is with us, God with us every day. I want us to instill this within our minds so that the moment we wake, we know he's there. So that when we're at work, he's there. He's there when we're eating, when we're chatting, when we're sleeping whatever we're doing, God with us.
I'll finish with this. We have some wonderful teachers. Those who prophesy and bring a word in season. Those who worship and praise God from the depths of their hearts. We have a pastor who is sold out for this place and for Jesus. Who sees great potential in the people and releases them. Enabling them to serve God to the best of their ability. We have those committed to prayer. Those who feed the poor. Those who have facilities to help young mums and dads. Teenagers, youth. Those who are going hungry those who are thirsty we are a powerful body of Christ and we just can't see it sometimes we need the veil to be removed from our eyes to enter into this next phase in ministry for the places where we live many of our pastors need encouraging they need us to tell them that word that you brought pastor from the Lord really spoke to my heart because God is with us and he is with the pastor and every single person that you've spoken to on the phone today. He is there just waiting to be the relational God that he truly is. You were designed to break down the gates of hell against your nation, against your family, against your friends, against your church. That the gates of hell will not prevail. You know, he is like a roaring lion sometimes. But the lions without teeth are the ones that make the most noise. When we know who the Father is, when we know God with us, there is nothing to fear. So I want to just say, if today you are struggling, if you're going through a time where it's difficult, where you're not hearing from God, or you feel that you're not getting through to your friends or to your pastor. If you're a pastor looking in today and you feel that no one's listening, take heart because God is with us and he is definitely with you. You need to hear that for yourself today. God is with you. He has not forsaken you. He is not letting you down, but he is a God who will endure and he will enable you to persevere so that you will win the race. If you need prayer, if you'd like to come for prayer, then please do get in touch with us. Um, for now, if you just reach me on, on my Facebook page, look under Rev Heather Butler, you'll find me there. And just simply say, I would like prayer in my messages box and I'll respond to you and I can FaceTime you or pray for you over the internet. But this is to encourage you to say that you are not alone in the midst of everything that is happening in the world today god is still god and nothing is ever going to change that he is always going to be the one who has the very last word amen